stewardship theme is that of attitude. So we'll see how the two go hand in hand. Let us prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on the third page of your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the sovereign over all the earth, the wisdom from on high, our merciful judge and savior. Let us boldly approach the throne of grace, trusting in God's mercy and love. Generous and faithful God, we confess to you all the ways, known and unknown, that we reject and undermine your steadfast love. Though you made us your people, we treat strangers with suspicion. Though you forgave our debts, we collect without mercy. Yet we are quick to pass judgment on others. Have mercy on us, God, and remember your promise to us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Through the living word, Jesus Christ, God forgives your every debt, your every sin, and gives you a new heart and a new spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. <coughs> Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
reading from Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will do no good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there, that the day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in the darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as other do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, but those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on a breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and, fa good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went, and I hid your talent in the ground. There you have, here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have in abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the young people to come forward. Come on, Zach, you can sit right here. Good morning. Does anybody know what this is? It looks like a plate, doesn't it? It is the cover to a Rubbermaid bowl. But guess what? Let's pretend for a minute that we do not know what this is. So Michaela was perfectly right. It could be used as a plate, couldn't it? Can anybody think of anything else it could be used for? A frisbee. Excellent, Michaela. In fact, I'd really love to throw this right now, but... <laughs> <laughs> anything else? We could maybe use it for a shovel. Or we could use it to carry things, put things on top of it and carry it. And, of course, we could use it what it was made for, to cover a bowl. Well, when we really look at something, there's a lot of uses for it. And when God created you, when God had created Zach and Carter, when he created you, he created you to be able to do a lot of things. But the one thing he wants you to do is somehow 
proclaim the gospel. Somehow with your life, let people know that Jesus loves them. Sometimes that is just smiling and saying hello, being their friend. Sometimes it's feeding them. Sometimes when they're angry, it's helping to calm them down. Somehow we do something because we know we have a God who loves us. Okay? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, Gracious God. we thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. We thank you for the gifts you give us. Help us to use them to let people know that you love them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go back to your seats now. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we look at the parable of the talents. Let's begin. This week, uh, something very fearful happened. How would you like to be a window washer in New York City? 68 stories up. And there window washing platform goes vertical. They were very thankful, the two window washers. Well, there they are. Each, by the way, had the first name of Juan. Uh, they said momentarily, they panicked. They were extremely frightened. They thought, there they go. They're going to be sidewalk pizza. But they realized they were safely strapped in. All they had to do was wait. And uh, it's interesting. Uh, I would be very fearful. But they, of course, had a press conference. Their union had a press conference. And they had to put up with all the questions from the, uh, the press. And of course, their answers were very short. Here we go. Were you scared for a moment? Did you ever look down? Yes. What did you think? I hope I don't fall. <laughs> did you take a selfie? <laughs> no. Well, I would have been very fearful at that moment, even when they had the rescue, cutting out the glass and pulling you in. Very afraid. Well, believe it or not, this text about the parable of the talents is about fear and being afraid. We church people, by and large, are safe people, are we not? We do not go out, we're very cautious and that's what makes us good people, good citizens, right? We're very cautious, generally. We're a little like, um, well, I have grandchildren. I can see movies like Shrek. Uh, the ogre, Shrek, is crossing a bridge to save the princess, Fiona, who's in a castle surrounded by a moat of molten lava. And he and the donkey are crossing the bridge. And they get ha halfway over, and there, the donkey does not want to go any further. And Shrek goes, oh, come on, we're halfway there. And he says, I know the other half is safer. I know that's safe. It's the way we tend to be in life. We want it safe. Well, then we have this text, which everyone thinks is about money. And we think that because a talent is a huge sum of money. A talent in Jesus' day was worth 20 years of daily wage. 20 years. 
So just think, if you're given 10 talents, you have a hundred years worth of money, hundred years of daily wage. Actually, that's 200 years, isn't it? <laughs> 200 years. Amazing. We're all given a talent. And these talents, uh, and, and the, you see, uh, w the reason it's about f fear is the one that was given one talent. Rather than use it, he buries it. The French scientist and theologian Pierre Teilhard de Cardin writes this. He sums up this parable. The parable of the talents is not really about money or abilities. It's a story about trust, a story about risk. Life is the same way. What turns out to be important is not money or abilities in themselves, but our decision to use them in ways that show our willingness to risk and to trust. The central question about life is not what did we accomplish, but whether we learned to obey, whether we learned to love. Or we could put it in another way, whether we learned to use, not hide, but use the talents God gave us. So the steward with one digs a hole and hides his talent in the ground. Here you have back exactly what you gave me. I didn't lose a thing. But the real question for us is, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? What would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? Martin Rudder, oh, I was going to tell you something about uh, our, our fear. Sometimes our fears, see, uh, the reason this is an attitude issue, fear is an attitude. And what was the, the man afraid of? What was the, the servant, the slave with one talent afraid of? His view of God, his view of the king, and of course, uh, in our understanding of the parable, would be our view of God was simply that he was mean and ruthless. So I better not step out of line mean and ruthless. Uh, C.S. Lewis had that problem. C.S. Lewis didn't become a Christian until uh, quite late in life. And he said one of the problems he had to deal with was the fact that his father was a stern disciplinarian and he likened God to his father, the stern disciplinarian. He said his father would recite to him Cicero before he disciplined him. And then he went to boarding school where the headmaster was extremely stern and severe. And actually, after um, C.S. Lewis had left the boarding school, the headmaster was declared insane and put into an institution. Uh, so he had that view of God, that God was, was not a loving God. But we as Lutherans, and if you don't hear anything else today, that God loves and accepts you no matter what. So knowing that, we ask the question, what would you attempt if you knew you could not fail? Martin Rutte is a, uh, one of these uh, consultants for corporations. And he developed three questions. And the three questions are simple. At first, he didn't think he could possibly ask these questions in a uh, corporate setting. But his questions all hinge around heaven. 
And the first thing he asks people is what, when have you experienced heaven on earth? And I suppose we've all had those moments in our lives when, oh boy, this feels so good. It's like heaven on earth. Um, by the way, I went to see uh, Dorothy Lokensgaard yesterday. And she, uh, the most difficult time for Dorothy in the hospital happens to be nights. And one of the problems with the, being in the hospital, you're medicated, it's hard to sleep, it's noisy. And she hasn't been sleeping well and she seems to have a dream every night. But on Friday night, her dream was of heaven. And she believed that she was actually going to heaven. And she kept saying to God, here I am, take me. And then she looked at me and she said, uh, Pastor Dan, there was someone there with white hair. <laughs> I said, well, Dorothy, who was that? And she goes, well, it was you, Pastor Dan. I thought it was nice that her view of heaven included me. <laughs> so think about that, a time when you experience heaven on earth. And then we have the second question. What is heaven on earth? And when you ask this question, people say end of violence, end of war, end of poverty, end of homelessness, all kinds of things. And then he asked them, in the next 24 hours, what concrete steps will you take to bring heaven, your view of heaven, to earth? In the next 24 hours, what will you do? And people do some amazing things. One woman started a, um, she wanted to do something about domestic violence, had no money to do anything, and someone else at the meeting said, well, why don't you ask everybody in the county to give a penny? So they started a campaign for everyone in the county, this was in Colorado near Denver, to give change to help with domestic violence. And they made quite a change. Another woman wanted to do something about homelessness. She was a, a realtor, real estate agent. So she decided, and this took some courage, I thought, she decided to ask all the other real estate agents in her office if they'd donate $100 every time they made a sale of property. They started collecting a fund, $50,000 they collected to this date. Some amazing results. What would you do to bring a little heaven to earth? Walter Harms, he's a retired um, professor, uh, Lutheran seminary professor. He says he remembers a um, a woman in Japan after World War II, she was living in very debilitating conditions and she developed tuberculosis. And while she lay bedfast, she got this dream of helping orphaned children, orphaned from the war, and those children that were abandoned who were usually mixed race, American GIs, uh, the children of American GIs, and she said, I want to build an orphanage. And she did. And then Walter Harms says this. B by the way, that was a Christian woman in Japan. Do you once in a while think you have it bad, that you have nothing good in your life? That, is all, that it is all a mess? Do you realize that you might just be lazy? Ouch! Even worse, do you know that it is evil, a terrible sin, to waste what God has given you? Double ouch! Well, we at Messiah Lutheran Church 
have been people who in all kinds of ways have been trying to bring a little bit of God's heaven to earth. I remember when I first came here a long time ago it seemed there were two desires that people had. The first was to have a new sanctuary. Uh, by the way, that was confirmed in 2004 when we um, had uh, Kairos come, Glenn Schoonover, con confirmed that, that we wanted a new sanctuary. The other thing, back in the beginning, I had sense from people. They always said, I, I, I felt we needed to have a daycare. And we should have done that at the beginning. We, we've missed out. So I thought that was interesting. Well, when we did that strategic plan with Kairos, they also said you need a vision statement and a mission statement. And we put together a very good one. And I don't know if you realize, I think about it when I say that mission statement, that somehow trying to bring heaven to earth, God's presence to earth, in all kinds of ways, and it serves us well. We're in the middle of a stewardship campaign why do we give? Simply. Together, we're trying to build a little piece of heaven, proclaiming the gospel in any way we can, a little piece of heaven to this community, among ourselves, even around the world through the ELCA. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the life everlasting. Remembering the saints who have gone before us and giving thanks for God's blessings, we pray for the church, all in need, and God's good creation. We pray for the church as we anticipate your coming again to bring restoration to the new heaven and earth. Help us not to bury our talents, but use them to further your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, we pray for all creation. We have thanks for the wonder of climate and tide, of mountains, valleys, rivers, and oceans. Help us become better stewards of this bounty. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all nations, their leaders and governments, that they rule with justice, mercy, reconciliation, and peacemaking. Gracious God, we continue to pray for all veterans whose lives are affected by scenes of war, replayed and relived. For those who feel they cannot be forgiven for mistakes from their past. For those anxiously seeking work. For those enduring heartbreak. Send your reconciling, healing peace as we await the findings of the Ferguson Grand Jury. We pray for those places where there is conflict for Turkey, where protesters assaulted three U.S. sailors, for Egypt, where eight servicemen are missing at sea after their ship was attacked, for each of us as we make life-changing choices every day, knowing little of where they might lead us. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy those who are ill. Especially Teresa Baumgartner, Tiffany Giles, Janelle Joshwick, Jim Lampy, Betty Lassant, Dorothy Lokensgard, Karen Lotion, Rose McGiles, Darlene McLaughlin, Pat Morrison, Ron Murhammer, Bud Norton, Trish Norberg, Jim Runyon, Mary Thomas, Janice Trotter, and David Ugla. Are there any others? We entrust to your never-failing care and love those who have died. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Declan William Seward. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and hopes, Good Shepherd, and bring us safely into all joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. We have uh, two things to dedicate. Our faith commitments, pledges for the coming year, as well as these letters to senators or politicians for Bread for the World. By the way, Art Simon, a Lutheran pastor who was the brother to Paul Simon, a senator, was the one who said, I want to bring a little heaven to earth. And he started Bread for the World to write letters to lobby. Let us pray. Gracious and sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts as we dedicate these faith commitments, these pledges and promises in this chest. We pray that you help them to grow to meet the needs of this ministry, a place where faith grows, the gospel is proclaimed, People are loved and accepted. People are fed. Lives are restored. We pray that you bless that mission and ministry. Bless these faith commitments. We also pray that you bless these letters and those who receive them open their hearts to hear the message that through their efforts, people can be fed. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. O oh God, the host at every meal, at this table you spread out a feast for all peoples, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Send us from this banquet to invite others into these good things, to let justice roll down like waters, and to care for the least of our sisters and brothers, through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and our Savior. Amen. couple of announcements. One is that next Sunday at 1230, we are going to have an annual meeting, our, our November annual meeting. We elect uh, people to the vacant seats in the church council, and that's what we'll do. We also, I want to remind you that Thanksgiving Eve, we gather here and have a Thanksgiving worship service, and then we have a pie social following. So um, remember that, that starts at 7. David. Two things. One is sort of a correction. One was, uh, it was not the death of Declan William Seward. It was the birth of Declan William Seward. Let me check so, that out, David. Uh, Mick said, I think, she said, well, next, next week we can pray for a resurrection or something. I don't know. But anyway, there is a Thrivent meeting this evening at Heritage Cafeteria with food and door prizes and stuff, 5 o'clock at the corner of Fremont and Battlefield, Heritage Cafeteria. Come on and eat. David, you are indeed correct. That was a birth. Well, thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Cassie Demick, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm helping coordinate some community service events for Messiah, and I just wanted to mention a couple of things that we have coming up next weekend because I need some volunteers. We are really trying to work with Hunger and Ozark's Food Harvest, and so uh, we've already done one backpack stuffing. If you guys don't know, there are a lot of kids in need, and the only meal they get are at school, and so on the weekends, they often don't have anything to eat, and Ozark's Food Harvest puts bags together with food for the kids and sends that home with them on the weekend. And so this is an assembly line project. We have 10 spots. We're trying to do this every other month, and um, next weekend, the times are from 1 to 4 p.m. We will have child care here if there's a need for it, so I need to know that. We can coordinate that because you have to be 12 or older to do this project. It's four hours. It's very fun, very rewarding. Um, you, it is an assembly line, so you do have to be able to put something from a box into a bag, but it's a lot of fun. And so um, let me know. My contact information should be in your bulletin, or you can let Chris know at the church office as well to sign up. And if you can let me know that as soon as possible. If you don't want to do assembly line stuff, we also have another project um, next weekend from, let's see, 9 to 3, and that's a, that's a food drive. And all you need to do is stand at a table for Ozarks Food Harvest. They'll have their sign, their information out at the Walmart on uh, West Republic and Golden. And so it's a, the neighborhood market there. And so those are just two-hour shifts. All ages are welcome, so young kids can come. It doesn't matter. You're just going to be asking for donations for people there. And then we also have one thing to keep in the back of your mind, cross lines. Has anyone, I don't know if anyone ever has ever done that, um, but it's a great program. This Christmas, my kids did that with us last year, and it was so rewarding for them. We're trying to get as big of a group as possible from Messiah to go do that, and the date is December 20th. It's a Saturday, and our time is 1130 to 330. 
So just let me know or the church office know if you're interested in any of those things. If you're interested in something later on, we're going to try to continue doing this community service um, with Messiah throughout next year as well. So thank you. Thank you, Cassie. And we do, every month, have a group that goes to cross lines and distributes food. I forget what Thursday of the month it is, but that group always needs help too. Third Thursday? Very good. I, now I'm hearing second, but second Tuesday. A second Thursday, excuse me. Woof. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.